Dear colleagues, uh, in this talk I would like to talk about the lymphatic drainage of the breast uh, and the limbs. Those I would like to uh, highlight some clinical importance of the uh, primary uh, lymph nodes. This is my uh, overview slide. First of all, I'd like to tell you some basic terms on the lymphatics and the lymphatic system, like lymphatic organs, the lymph fluid proper, and also I'd like to highlight some uh, basics on the lymphatic circulation. Later, I will talk about the lymph nodes, about large lymph vessels, and finally, I will focus on your exam topics related to the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb and the breast. And another topic is the uh, superficial uh, layer of the trunk. And finally, we will run through the uh, lymphatic drainage of the lower limb. So let's start with the uh, basics. Uh, this slide shows you the summary on the uh, most important uh, uh, lymphatic organs. And uh, first, uh, if you want to define the lymphatic system, the lymphatic system is a defense system which uh, should protect the organism uh, against uh, foreign uh, pathogens, uh, viruses, bacteria, parasites and foreign bodies sometimes and even cancer cells might be eliminated by the lymphatic system. Um, in this uh, scheme you can see some examples for the most important lymphatic organs but details you will get in the uh, second semester histology uh, on these organs. Uh, today I would like to talk about the lymph fluid, the lymph vessels, and uh, here you can see some lymph organs, but we will focus on the lymph nodes uh, today. First of all, what is lymph fluid and how is this um, system working? So as everyone knows, we have blood vessels in the human body, we have arteries and we have veins, and between those we have a system of uh, capillaries. Uh, these capillaries um, go through the tissues and uh, you know that the pressure on the, in the arteries is higher than in the veins and on the arterial side of the capillaries some fluid is filtered into the extracellular space and also into the extra vasal space which later on the venous side where the pressure is lower in part returns to the veins and finally uh, this uh, fluid is transported by the veins away from the tissues. But this um, is not working for the entire amount of fluid since some uh, fluid stays outside the blood vessels. Uh, approximately 3 liters of fluid is retained in the extra basal space which is collected by the lymph capillaries. The lymph capillaries are blind end tubes um, which collect uh, this fluid from the uh, body. As uh, in this scheme you can see here the blood uh, vessels uh, are there with the, uh, with the capillaries and here are the lymph vessels, they pick up the lymph fluid and finally they transport the lymph fluid towards lymph nodes. Um, the lymph vessels uh, enter the so-called primary uh, lymph nodes and they filter uh, the lymph fluid. They, later on the lymph fluid is then transported to secondary and tertiary um, lymph nodes and finally it's transported to the great uh, lymphatic vessels but I will come back to this point um, a bit later. Uh, this slide shows you that uh, in the limbs uh, we have two systems of uh, lymphatic drainage. There is a so-called superficial lymph vessel system which is located below the skin but um, above the fascia layer in the subcutaneous uh, tissues. And um, we also have a deep lymphatic vessel system which is um, in the deep next to the large uh, vessels, arteries um, and veins. Uh, the circulation of the lymph, lymph fluid is supported by the movement of the muscles and this uh, flow is also helped by the valves in the lymphatic vessels um, which uh, prevent the backflow of lymph fluid. Now, uh, I would like to tell you some basics on the lymph nodes themselves. Uh, this um, area I would like to represent the body part, it doesn't matter which one. This is the so-called drainage area one, for example. This area is drained by a couple of uh, lymph vessels and the lymph fluid is drained into the primary lymph nodes. These primary lymph nodes, um, uh, also called sentinel lymph nodes, will then filter the fluid which goes on into the secondary lymph nodes. And then, uh, after a second filtration, it goes to the tertiary lymph node again. Uh, there is one thing what I would like to point out, that this drainage area, for instance, is drained by this um, lymph node. 
and this particular lymph node is the secondary lymph node in relationship to this area, but it is a primary lymph node in relationship to that area, and that has a significance in the breast lymphatic drainage. I will come back to this point a bit later also. And this, of course, might be even more complicated. Finally, after the last series of lymph nodes, the uh, efferent lymph vessels drain the fluid into the great lymphatic vessels. Um, the lymph nodes have a great clinical significance. Um, you can examine them, but how to imagine how, is the, how does the lymph node look like? They are bean shaped small encapsulated organs uh, formed by lymphatic follicles, but the details uh, we will discuss in histology too. And the lymph nodes have a filtering and immunological functions, as I mentioned. Um, lymph nodes may be um, sometimes affected by diseases, they get enlarged and uh, you will see in your clinical practice that tender, soft, movable lymph nodes may suggest inflammation but in contrast to this not painful hard nodes with, uh, uh, which are connected to the uh, surrounding tissues uh, will suggest malignant disease. Uh, after this um, I would like to talk about the great lymphatic vessels. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the primary, secondary and tertiary lymph nodes will collect the lymph fluid into larger uh, lymph vessels. And um, here you can see a summary of these great lymphatic vessels. I have to say that this is more uh, related to the anatomy too, since these lymphatic vessels are found in the thoracic cavity. But uh, basically, um, that you understand the topic, I would like to go through very briefly. So, um, you can see here that the uh, thoracic duct is the, one of the main uh, lymphatic vessels that drains the lymph uh, fluid into the larger part uh, of the human body. It starts with the cisterna chile here in the abdominal cavity and then it also will uh, collect the subclavian trunk, it will also pick up the left jugular trunk and it will also uh, pick up the bronchomediastinal trunk that uh, drains the lymph fluid from the thoracic organs. On the right upper part of the human body, we have the right lymphatic trunk. The right lymphatic trunk uh, will uh, pick up the jugular trunk, the right jugular trunk from the neck. It will also collect uh, the right subclavian trunk and also it will pick up the bronchomediastinal trunk. So this way the lymph fluid uh, returns to the uh, venous uh, circulation. And uh, um, in this slide you can see that the thoracic duct in front of the vertebral column goes upwards and finally it drains into the so-called left venous angle that is uh, formed by the internal jugular vein and subclavian vein on the left side and here the pressure circumstances are favorable and here the lymph fluid can uh, because of the low pressure return to the uh, venous uh, circulation as there is a certain sucking force so atmospheric pressure of the intrathoracic uh, uh, cavity. And in the next, uh, I would like to highlight those uh, really clinically and also um, in the exam, very important points uh, which you have to know for the uh, exam at the end of the semester. So in the next slides, I would like to tell you the lymphatic drainage uh, of the upper limb and the uh, breast. Um, this scheme shows you the dorsal and the palmar surface uh, of the upper limb. And the green lines, GURPS, would like to represent uh, the course of the lymphatic vessels. It starts in the palm, as you can see, most of the vessels uh, turn back to the dorsal side of the hand, and finally they travel upwards, um, typically next to the veins, under the skin, uh, subcutaneously. The first uh, order lymph nodes are the so-called cubital lymph nodes in the cubital fossa, and then they go on into uh, they go on uh, the lymph fluid goes on into the lateral axillary um, lymph nodes, but the lateral axillary lymph nodes may also collect lymph fluid directly from the shoulder and the uh, dorsal side of the upper lymph uh, primarily. Uh, this uh, picture shows you um, an inflammation in which case next to the lymph, uh, lymph vessels um, uh, the uh, inflammation causes some reddish uh, color in the skin. This is designated as lymphangitis. This is um, very common in uh, inflammatory uh, diseases in infected uh, wounds, for instance. Um, uh, this slide, um, and in the coming next uh, couple of slides, I'd like to go through the lymphatic drainage of the female breast because this has probably the largest clinical significance uh, in this field. 
Um, these are the lateral superficial lymph uh, nodes which collect the lymph fluid from the upper limb. This is um, already known from the last slide. Then um, here uh, we can find a couple of lymph nodes next to the pectoral uh, area. That's the uh, group of the pectoral uh, lymph nodes. Uh, they uh, drain the lymph fluid from the lower um, lateral quarter of the uh, female breast. The secondary lymph nodes um, from here uh, will collect the lymph fluid. Um, these are the subscapular uh, lymph nodes. Um, next, the medial half uh, of the breast is primarily drained towards the so-called parasternal lymph nodes. I would like to highlight that these lymph nodes are situated behind the sternum, also already inside the thoracic cavity. Then, next, I'd like to mention the central axillary lymph nodes, which are very important um, as they collect the lymph fluid from the lateral upper quarter of the breast, which is uh, the most common place of malignant diseases um, in the female breast. And it's also important because the uh, central axillary lymph nodes uh, serve as um, secondary and even tertiary lymph nodes of the before mentioned groups here um, in the pectoral, subscapular, and the lateral axillary nodes. And finally, we have the apical axillary lymph nodes, which collect also from the upper part of the breast the lymph fluid, and also they get uh, already uh, two or three times filtered lymph fluid. Um, and then finally they filter the lymph and then it goes on into the great lymphatic vessels uh, into the subclavian trunk as I mentioned uh, in the last slides. Um, it, always, it has to be mentioned also that the uh, porosternal lymph nodes behind the sternum are connected to the lymph nodes of the abdominal cavity as well. Uh, this slide would like to uh, show you some clinical significance of all these. Clinicians divide the lymph nodes into three, three zones most of the times and they use the pectoralis minor muscle as a landmark. Lateral to the pectoralis minor zone one um, uh, is located, then behind the muscle is the second group and um, medial superior to the muscle we have the third group. And if a breast cancer develops, clinicians always examine these lymph nodes and uh, which lymph node group is affected by the disease will uh, be an important prognostic factor of the, uh, of the case. After this, um, I would like to turn to the uh, lymphatic drainage of the trunk. This is uh, quite simple. Um, here you have to look at this scheme. The most important point is this uh, area here at the umbilicus. Since this is the border and from the umbilicus above uh, the lymph vessels drain the lymph fluid towards the lateral axillary lymph nodes and below this the lymph fluid is collected towards the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. They also are related to the lower limb. I will come back to this point a bit later. Um, so if anything happens in the upper half of the torso, the axillary lymph nodes might be affected and they might be involved in the disease and below this border the inguinal ones are responsible. So these arrows show you the direction of uh, lymphatic drainage and the border. And uh, finally, I would like to highlight the significance of the lymphatic drainage uh, of the lower limb. This scheme shows you a posterior view and an anterior view of the lower limb. Uh, the lymph vessels start to collect the lymph fluid from the, the plantar region, and then they go either uh, on the dorsal side of the foot or they turn to the back side to the calf and then they travel Upwards, they like to follow the uh, superficial veins, lesser saphenous or greater saphenous vein, but there are some lymph vessels uh, uh, found independently from those veins as well. Um, from the sole and from the calf, the lymph fluid is primarily drained into the lymph nodes in the popliteal fossa, popliteal lymph nodes, and then the most important group of lymph nodes is uh, located next to the inguinal ligament. That is why we call them superficial inguinal lymph nodes, which drains the ventral aspect uh, of the lower limb, but also it has uh, important areas on the dorsal side. This list is an important list, it's a kind of checklist what you have to look after if as a clinician you will touch some tender, enlarged, um, um, uh, superficial inguinal lymph nodes. In this case, you have to look at the ventral side of the lower limb, you have to study and you have to examine the gluteal region if uh, there is um, anything pathological. You have to uh, check the abdominal wall below the umbilicus. This was uh, indicated in my earlier slide. 
Then uh, the external genital organs also pick up lymph fluid from this area and considering the high significance of sexually transmitted diseases has to be um, uh, studied and uh, examined as well. Then uh, the perineal area um, uh, is also in an important field which might also develop diseases. Anus and anal canal is also on the checklist since um, uh, this is also a very commonly affected area. And uh, in females, um, it has to be uh, taken into account that the lower vagina, lower part of the vagina, might be also in the background of lymph node enlargement in this area. And um, in females, the part of the uterus next uh, to the so-called tubal angle um, also may, may send some lymph vessels into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. And uh, if you find enlarged lymph nodes in the inguinal area, most of the times, a gynecologist has to examine uh, uh, the patient if it's a shift. Um, this scheme shows you a larger image of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. One can divide this uh, group into an oblique, uh, uh, next to the inguinal ligament, into a horizontal um, group. And then here you have a vertical tract, which is situated next to the greater um, uh, surface, uh, surface way. So this is the horizontal tract, this is the vertical tract, these are the primary lymph nodes and probably it's not very well visible but in green you can see here behind the fascia lata in the deep some, uh, some lymph nodes and they are the secondary deep inguinal lymph nodes and one of them which is next uh, to the inlet of the femoral, femoral kinea, the Rosenmüller's node which uh, has also a great uh, uh, significance uh, in the lymphatic drainage um, of the lower limb. If these lymph nodes get enlarged uh, infected, inflammated, uh, similar symptoms may occur in the uh, inguinal area. So um, this is the um, uh, talk for today and uh, this is how I wanted to summarize the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb and the lower limb. Uh, thank you for your attention.